Okay, aloha everyone. Welcome to Screencastify part three. So I'm gonna turn it over to Elisa. Welcome to Screencastify part three. Elisa, go ahead. Thanks, let me um, share my screen. <clears throat> so welcome. Um, I know this is gonna be a little bit more of an intimate group with us. Um, if you've gone through part one and then you were felt pretty good about it and you did your homework and then you did part two and and you know the mother bird sent her you know babies off and hopefully you know you were starting to play with it a little bit and practice and now we're at part three where we're actually going to maybe do a little bit more hands-on so I'm right with you um, I'm going to give you some information and some tips on other ways to use Screencastify than maybe just the normal how-to because I think maybe that's um, where a lot of you um, is your go-to because that that for me was my easiest thing is to show how to do something so um, that was normally what my screencasts were um, but now let's let's we'll talk about um, other things that we can do with screencasts and uh, what tools we can do with them. So as you know, my name is Elisa Takeuchi. I work at Garden Grove um, Adult Education in Southern California. I've been working with OTAN for about three years and uh, I have been it, more busy than normal because of our circumstances, which is great for me. And so um, I've just been super appreciative that OTAN has really gone above you know, stepped above where we could have them as our resource um, for, for all this remote um, instruction. And I'm currently in Sacramento. So here's our agenda for today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, we go through the welcome. We're going to start learning about screencasts as screencastify as a for teaching a lesson. And I'll give you a little demonstration on that. We'll talk about feedback to students, how we can use video to give feedback to students in, in a variety of uh, different ways. Um, we'll review some of the tools and how to share. And in between all of that, we'll also be, we'll be doing some activities. So, oh, um, don't forget that, you know, when you're working with Screencastify, especially, um, one of the things that might be daunting for some of you is working with multiple tabs. And my screen right now is black. I don't know what it looks like for you, but I'm going to play the video and hope it works. An important skill to have when using Screencastify is the ability to... Sorry, can you hear that? Alisa, yeah, I can hear it. Okay, because I, I don't remember pushing that button about the sound, but okay. ...to toggle between multiple tabs at the top of your screen. This will be important because you'll want to organize your tabs in an order that's efficient for you so that your Screencastify goes more smoothly. Now, as you can see, I have multiple tabs at the top of my screen. This is what's called tab hoarding. Now, I'm hoping, no wait, I know that I am not the only one that does this. So, even though I have plenty of tabs open, I'd like to organize them so again, I can use it more efficiently. So as you can see here, I have my work email, I have a Gmail, and I have another Gmail over here, and I'd like them all together. So I'm going to click on my Gmail, and I'm going to physically drag it over to where I'd like it to go and let go. So now I have my work email, a Gmail, and another Gmail here. So again, I'd like my uh, Google Slides next to each other, so I'm going to click, drag, and let go. One more time with my Screencastify, I'm going to move my Screencastify so that they're all next to each other. And now, as you can see, I have a pretty organized order of my tabs at the top of the screen. Now, let's say um, for some reason, I'd like to move my Gmail to the end. So I'm clicking and I'm moving and my hand moves and, oh, and, and then I don't know what to do and I let go and oh my gosh, where did all my tabs go? I've lost all my tabs. Don't worry, they're still there. If I move this tab right here, if I drag it down and I let go, there are all my tabs. The tab that's been moved has just been layered on top. So don't worry. You can do two things. You can exit and get rid of the tab itself, or if you want to put it back, click on the tab. Don't click in the middle. Click on the tab, put it back in the line, and then manipulate it to wherever you'd like it to go. So let's try that one more time. I have my, um, well, I don't know, my Screencastify. Oh, I'm gonna move this back. I'm gonna move this back. And I look, and, oh, oh, and now it's gone, okay? So all you need to do is click on the tab itself, 
move it, and look, it's right back in the line of tabs, and I can let go and put it right back. You're not, you haven't lost anything, okay? So um, that's how you go ahead and manipulate between tabs. And again, this will be important for your screencast device. So let's go ahead and practice. If you're on Zoom right now, you may have to exit full screen, and you might have some tabs behind it. All right, so I'm going to stop that because um, we practiced it before. And if you want, I mean, if you're if you're watching right now and you're like, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that, go ahead and off to the side or on your other computer, practice moving the tabs over. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This is what Anthony was talking about earlier about side by side. If you have uh, just one computer, if you're on a computer and you have just one screen, then if you want to do this. Um, hands-on, you know, as, uh, as we're talking, you want to practice, you're going to want to have two screens open at the same time. One is going to be the Zoom with this presentation, and then one is going to be with whatever activity we're doing, whether it be a Google Doc or a Google Slide or, or whatever it is that we're practicing with. So you, you're going to want to manipulate so that you have two slides side by side. And again, if that's too much for you, then please, Go ahead and just and sit back and watch and then you can practice on your own afterwards. We're going to go ahead and get started with teaching a lesson and again my I don't know why but my screen looks black right here. I'm not sure what it looks like for you but um, I'm going to play what I made for teaching a lesson. So this is how I could use Screencastify while teaching a lesson and I want to make a side note also. I did this during a meeting, during a hangout, um, sorry, a Google Meet and I didn't practice with the Google Zoom, but I, I can't see why it wouldn't work. But I, I thought about it later that this could be a really good way to uh, screencast part of a teaching lesson if you're having classroom on Zoom or on Google Hangouts and you want to just capture that part of that lesson for in case any student was absent or couldn't make it to that meeting or wants to review it again, you can go ahead and capture that lesson and then save it for later. Remember, um, if you don't have, if you only have the free account, um, you have a limit of five minutes. So just go ahead and let it run out to five minutes if you want or stop it when you need to. And then, um, you, then you can re-show it again later on with your students. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are in your Zoom class or a Hangouts Meet, you can still screencast a lesson that you want to show your students. And in case they were absent or some students couldn't make it to your meeting, then you can share the screencast of the lesson with them through email or Remind or Classroom, however you communicate with your students. So I'm in a Hangouts meeting with my students and I'm going to explain uh, page 112 with them. First, we're going to listen to the vocabulary. Page 112, lesson B, exercise one. One, cutting the grass. Cutting the grass. Okay, and of course we would listen to the whole thing and we would practice the pronunciation. We'd go over it a couple of times and me in the meanwhile, I'm still screencasting. So then now we're going to practice. And one thing I did notice though, is that I have to use the toolbar from Cambridge. So this happens to be from Cambridge Adventures. I cannot use the Screencastify draw tool. So, um, and, and I think it's only just because it's the software that I'm using. If you're using just a regular PDF worksheet or something, then you'll be able to use your toolbar. So I would explain my practice. Um, so students, this is, we're going to match, match, match the vocabulary with the- Sorry, I'm gonna stop this real quick. I just wanna give like a little um, disclaimer. So if you're looking at this and you're like, wow, that's kind of blurry or fuzzy, it's because I, I made it smaller so that I could fit it on the screen right now. But if I were actually with my students, I would blow this up. Um, the Ventures presentation tool has the uh, options to zoom the page in and out. So I would actually zoom this in. So if we were in a Hangouts um, meeting or Zoom, then the picture would be, the pictures would be bigger um, and we could see the, the writing clearer, so. 
the picture, the vocabulary with the picture. So taking out the trash. So which picture is taking out the trash? We get our pen, and if you're on a PDF, you would just still get your pen. And yes, we're going to match to the person, okay? And students, is this a man or a woman? The man, the man is taking out the trash. If you want to write your sentences, capital T, the man is taking out the trash, and then don't forget your period at the end. The man is taking out the trash. So go ahead and you're going to finish one, two, three, four, five, six, match to the picture, and then write your sentences. Great. So that's how I could use Screencastify um, if I was in a classroom with my students, online classroom with my students. And this particular lesson, if I knew students weren't in the meeting at the time, then I would save this and then they could watch it later on. I can email it to them or I could put it, I can save it as a YouTube video and they could watch it later on. So um, I'm gonna stop there real quick. Um, Anthony, do we have any questions or comments so far? Um, yes, a few. So, okay. okay, so again, just a reminder um, from you, is there a way to get more than five minutes per Screencastify or do you have to pay for pay for that? Uh, yes, you'll have to pay for it. Um, it's a, it's the premium uh, version. And so with the free, you have a, a limit of five minutes, but unlimited videos. And then with the premium, it's $29 a year for educators and it's unlimited time, unlimited videos and extra, um, tools and you can also merge videos together and you can also trim videos anywhere in the video in with the free it's only trimming at the front and the uh, the back end and then um, again just as a reminder you showed us the screencastify you just showed us mm -hmm. um, that was the Cambridge ventures so you mm -hmm. said that Cambridge had its own set of um, annotating tools, and that was over on the left-hand side, right? Correct, okay, yes. But normally, when you're doing a Screencastify, those annotation tools will come up, right? Yes, so if I was on a, a Word document or a PDF, the toolbar would be on the bottom left-hand side. And I tried my best because I kept thinking, why can't I use, I had, I could see the toolbar when I was doing this video. I could see that the Screencastify toolbar, but when I went to go try to use it, it wouldn't let me. But I was just thinking also, I'm using two different monitors and it might have been because I couldn't move the toolbar from one monitor to the other. So if you go and you try it, if you have like a software that has its own annotation tools, you may be able to do both, but I'm not too sure. So in my case, it did not work. Okay. So I think here's a couple of more, two more toolbar questions. So Amy said, I seem to not be able to see the Screencastify toolbar when I'm screencasting with a Google slide presentation. Is that because the slides toolbar becomes my only option or is she not doing something correct? Um, there could be two things. If you're in presentation mode, the toolbar will be there but maybe not all the tools and but if if anything double check to make sure when you're just um starting your screencast and it has all the different options about tab browser desktop webcam that that toolbar i mean that menu make sure to click more options and that your down at the bottom is this show toolbar is is toggled on because that could be an oversight also. So even if you want the toolbar, but you don't see it, make sure that it's um, toggled on so that it shows. And then if you're in your screencast and you don't want it anymore, you can always do um, Alt-T or Control-Alt-T and it goes away. It, it'll toggle off. Um, what about, so somebody asked, why can't I see the Screencastify tools at the bottom of my Chromebook? Um, again, you might want to double check to see that your toolbar is enabled. And if it depends on where you are on 
your Chromebook, and we're going to talk about that, that in just a second, where if I open up a new tab, it actually just says new tab, I cannot use, uh, and I start a screencast, the tools won't work there. You have to type google.com or whatever your home page is. You have to be on a, a site, and then the toolbar will, uh, uh, will appear. And I'll show you that in just one second. And let's do one more question. Um, sometimes I can't get the arrow to show in a, re in a recording, even though I selected in my tools. What could I do in that situation? The arrow as in the cursor, maybe? Uh, that... This is, yeah, just as arrow. I'm not sure if, it, if she meant cursor or not. That's Laura. Mm -hmm. If you used a different tool, let's say you use the pen or the eraser or something, the spotlight, then you're gonna have to go back to the toolbar and, and physically click on the arrow and then the arrow should come back on. Okay. So hopefully that, that helps, um, hopefully that helps your, your situation. Okay. Great. So I think, yeah, if, um, I think if you're ready to go, why don't you okay. show us, um, okay. and then there was just a comment, somebody said that um, actually Screencastify recently has made a number of updates to mm -hmm. the free account. So you, mm -hmm. I, there may be some more options there that weren't there when you first presented the first. Just yeah, I've, there's one definitely that's noticed that that I noticed right away, um, maybe about five days after our part two, and I kind of added it at the end of this presentation, but I didn't want to waste too much time on it um, because I didn't I, I I delved into it, but I will talk about it later. Great. Let me, all right, so. Not only can you use Screencastify to do how-to videos, which seems to work the best, I believe, especially for me because I teach such low-level um, English students, having the video to show how to do something really helps them because I can talk to them and I can write it out, but if they actually see me doing it as if I were in the classroom, then it helps them to be able to um, repeat what's being asked of them to do. So. We're going to talk about feedback also. If you are able, if you have a class that's pretty established and a lot of them or most of them or all of them are using a computer to do their homework and they have their Google accounts, either Gmail or G Suites, then you know, utilizing Google Docs or Google Slides, all the Google products would be really beneficial for you because they all tie in together. And Screencastify is no exception. Screencastify is part of Google. And so using that in, in addition to the Google tools will enhance it. So if you have a Google Doc and all the students are contributing to it or a slideshow and they're all contributing to it and you're going to go and make comments instead of just typing out an email or a comment saying, hey, great job or something, the students would be so excited to click on something and see you talking to them as if you were in the room with them. You were, and you're specifically speaking to them, not the whole class. So for example, if I made one, I could say, Louise, I love your slide. You did such a good job. Your speaking was clear. Your sentence was perfect. Great job. And it doesn't have to be very long. It could be a few seconds, but those few seconds will make a world of difference to your students. And so um, these are the step-by-steps on how to do it with a Google Doc. Now, I have a, a, a link right here, a bit.ly. If you are working, if you want to do this hands-on, if you can open up a new tab, so you might have to get out of full screen on Zoom, and then go to a new tab and type in the URL bit.ly forward slash screencastify google doc. Now it is case sensitive, so you, you must have the capital S, the capital G, and the capital D. If I were doing this with my students, I would make it much shorter and I would not have any capitals in there just to make it much easier for them to type. So that's something that you might want to consider, keep in mind. But for you who are professionals and typing is no problem, then go ahead and type in bit.ly forward slash screencastify google doc. 
And we're going to cross our fingers that this is going to work because I haven't done it before. Lisa, people, I think people need to sign into your Google Doc unless you want to make it, do you want to change the settings on it? I, I thought I did. I made it so that anybody with the link could, let me just double check. So Elisa, though, people should be, um, people should be signed into a Google account though, right? Anyway? Yes. Most, more than likely. I mean, most yeah. of the time when you go, go onto your computer, if you use Chrome all the time, then it, you know, when you get onto your computer, it should be pretty automatic. But if not, if that's, if Google, if Chrome is not your go-to, your default, then yes, please make sure that you're into a Google account. Anthony, can you put in the chat bit.ly forward slash doc, uh -huh, bit.ly forward slash doc. Lowercase. Uh, low, lowercase. Everything lowercase. Yeah, okay. everything lowercase. Doc practice and the number three. Doc practice three. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. Basically, you're going to type in your name and then you're going to make a very quick screencast. Um, but because this is a, a living document, you can't all start at the top. So I made plenty of of cells for you. So some of you that are just coming in, you might want to go down to the bottom because you don't want somebody to override you. I would never do this with my students because I have lower level students and it would be more difficult. I would have numbers. So this is another thing that I would do with my students is that I would number all the cells and I would assign a number to my students. So um, Maria, you are number one. Kang, you are number two. You know, Jose, you are number three, et cetera, so that they know where to find their cell and then type their name. Otherwise, they're kind of fighting each other on where to write. What I'd like you to do is you can do it right on the screen if you'd like. So if you're signed into Google, at the very top on the right-hand side, you should see your Screencastify logo. It's like an arrow, a peachy colored uh, arrow to the right with a camcorder in the middle. If you've been practicing with your screen, if you've been practicing Screencastify, you know this, this is automatic. So go ahead and you're going to make a five second video of yourself. Just say, my name is da da da, and then something else. You could say what district you work for or you know whatever you wanna say, five seconds, and, and then finish. When you finish, then go ahead and copy the URL. I just want you to get a, an idea of how to do it. So you can do this project with your students. So your students could actually do it. If they are on Google, if they're using docs and you have them get Screencastify and start utilizing it, this is a pretty easy link that they, I mean, a pretty easy activity that they could do also. Alisa, there was a question from someone. Um, what should I click on, webcam only? question? Yes, that would be great because that would give that face-to-face -face kind of feedback to your students. And we're just doing this as an activity just so you know an idea, but for example, your students may write, maybe they did some writing and they wrote a sentence or a paragraph or an essay, depending on your level or, and what the activity is. You would do the same thing. You would screencast a webcam and you would say, Martha, great job. You finished quickly and your sentences are perfect. I really like this. You might want to think about using different adjectives, you know, or some sort of feedback. And then you finish and then there's a video for them. So depending on how many students you have, it could take a, you know, a, a little while but the rewards will be so worth it. They'll be so excited to have their own personalized video as if you were speaking directly to them uh, in person. Elisa, so Angela, mm -hmm. um, a question. So this is the first time somebody is doing this. So can you tell me again where to find the link to make the video? As soon as I finish, it saves in your Google Drive. Like there's no saving. It automatically put it in your Google Drive and then it'll say copy shareable link. You click on that and that's the copy and then you go into the doc and you right click and paste. And Elisa, so again, just so people, there's another question. So mm -hmm. once you have your link copied for your Screencastify, <laughs> Mm -hmm. then go over to Elisa's Google Doc. But you have to make sure that you have a line selected with your name on it, right? Yes. So if, yes. if you don't have your name already, just find a blank 
a line, a row, a blank row, type your name and then right click paste into the, the second column. So this was just one example. I wanted to show you an example of what it could look like and you could you know, manipulate this any way you see fit for your class. So if working with a table works better for your students, again, I would, I would recommend maybe the first time, even if you have advanced students, I would probably number the cells, you know, the, the rows, and then assign each one a row first, just so that they're not fighting, you know, because it's a new thing and you don't want them to be all confused about it. So I would assign them a row and then have them type in their name and they can make their own screencast and insert it. Or if you have their, if you have their writing, then you can insert it into a box. The other thing is, the second part is you can also add it as comments. Okay, and if you can see on the right hand side, if you see my name and you see some comments, uh, if you see the row, Terry's there, Jacqueline is there, you can highlight a name and then on the right hand side you'll, you'll see the, I wonder if I can do this, just a minute. If you can see on the right hand side, I have, so I inserted, I inserted my video here and I also inserted it here. So for example, if you don't want to make a table and the students have their writing on the doc and you just want to make a comment, you can highlight and when it's yellow, that means there is a comment. So for example, if I highlighted Jacqueline's right now, if I hide her name, you'll see a little plus right here and it says add a comment. So I can click on that and then I can paste I can either type a comment. Wow, you did a good, you, you know, you did a great job. Or I could do both. I could right click and paste my video in the comments as well. So you have your choice. You can do it in a, in a box like this. You could do it on the comments on the side. So if you would like to practice that, that would be great. Go ahead and highlight your name click the plus button on the side and then add your comment. Alisa, um, yes. just a question in the chat that's come up. So um, once you, if you have a, a, your first screencast and you finish your first screencast and it's still processing, can you immediately start doing a second screencast or do you have to wait until the first one is finished? I'm going to, just off the top of my head because I don't think I ever experienced it, but I'm going to say you have to finish the process first before you start another one. I, otherwise, I, I feel like maybe it'll slow things down for everything. It'll slow down your, your second one and your first one. So I would wait. But hopefully, I mean, the, and of course, it's it, the shorter the, the screencast, the faster it'll process. So if it's a 10 second one versus a five minute one, it's going to take, you know, different amounts of time to process. And again, this is just one example of an idea of how you can use Screencast, Screencastify to give feedback to your students. And how exciting would it be that they could actually do it. So I'm glad that worked out. Okay, so let me move this back. When you, when we finish today and you're like, that was so much fun. That was great. I wish I, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And you can't remember it's right here. It's, it's the step-by-step -step on how to do that particular activity. So if you can, if you want to take a picture, we'll, we'll you'll get the handouts um, after. All right. Oh, and so uh, just as a side note, um, two side notes. It, the video, when they click on the link, it will open in a new tab. So if you're working with students that are new to computers, um, you're going to want to forewarn them on that and then show them how to get back to the document or wherever you need them to go because it will open in a new tab. And then also, if you are using the comments section in, in lieu of the table, 
if you're making a lot of comments to different students, my suggestion is that you write their name first so that they know that comment goes to that person versus all of them looking at everybody's comments, which would be fine also if you don't care, but if you just want them to find their own comment, then type their name in first. Okay, oh, look at that. Oh. I guess I <laughs> I gave you the wrong thing. That's why this right here, I'll show you what it is. <laughs> I gave you the wrong, I was ahead of myself. This is what I wanted to show you. So if my students were writing a, a sentence, they would write their name and write a sentence and then I would write a comment to them. That's what it was. Sorry, I got lost. So my student writes a sentence on Saturday, my son washed car. And then I say, Kung, watch the video. And then I have the video there, they would watch and it would have the comments back to them. And then again, I, so I put their name in front of the comment so that they know this is theirs. And then this was the table. So they type their name and their sentence and then this is the comments the video, the screencast. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So then that's the practice. All right. So now we're working on it with slides. If you are using Google Slides as your presentation tool versus PowerPoint, then you can also do some of the same feedbacks. Or if your students are creating presentations on slides, you can use some of the same tools that we just practiced with docs in slides. So again, because they're all connected by Google, then it's very easy to transfer um, some skills from one tool to another. So we will talk about how to work with slides as a presentation. So you are creating a presentation for your colleagues or your students, and you are adding a screencast to add to the multimedia of it. We'll talk about the feedback on a student presentation, similar to what we just did. You watch the student presentation and you can create comments on their presentation. You can also do Screencastify to just add audio only for listening practice. So we'll talk about that because uh, there's a couple of ways to do it and I'll show you how we'll practice. And then of course, you know, students can create their own slideshows Either you create one slide with a bunch, uh, one presentation with many, many, many slides, and you assign each one a slide, and they create whatever it is the, the assignment is from you, or you can just have them create one by themselves. It's all theirs. All right, so let me show you what this looks like. Today is Monday. On Mondays, I do the laundry. I am in the laundry room. That was a listening practice where I have a picture and um, just my voice. So there, I could have just put nothing or I could have put some abstract picture there, but I kind of wanted to give them a little bit of a clue of what it is they will be listening because I teach beginning literacy. I want them to have some sort of idea of what it is they will be listening about, listening to. So I had the picture of the washer and dryer and then I gave my sentences and then the questions. Okay, so um, as a presentation in multimedia, you're going to open a slides presentation you're going to start your Screencastify. You'll choose tab browser because you're not going to be moving around from, from different tabs or different places on your desktop. So go ahead and choose tab browser. Make sure that your mic is on. And then you can pick and choose if you want to embed your camera or not. So for me, for example, in that example, I did not use my webcam because I just wanted them to listen and focus on the questions and the picture and not on me. So again, you're gonna to have to decide when it is you want them to focus on you talking with your face or just you as your voice. You can use the toolbar um, to do the, embed the video or not. Um, you can also use Alt W or Option W for mouse. Okay, so 
Um, again, this is the how-to. If you want to practice this later on, this is the how-to step-by-step. And so then, okay, so <laughs> let's see if this works again. I hope this is the right one. So go ahead and open up a new tab and type in bit.ly forward slash screencastify slides three, all lowercase. The questions are again, um, I seem to not be able to see the screencastify toolbar when I'm screencasting with a Google slide presentation. Is that because the slides toolbar becomes my only option or am I doing something wrong? So again, if you want to remind us, especially when we're using the Google Slides and if mm -hmm. we're having trouble seeing that toolbar, what we should do. Okay, let me um, move this over. I don't, I don't want to hide, oh well. <laughs> if, uh, if anybody, it's a uh, Screencastify Slides 3, the number three. So in here I have, okay, so we have a bunch of people fighting for the slides, or maybe you're just clicking on mine just to look at it. But again, this would be another example of, I would already have this manipulated and I would tell my students, okay, Maria, you're number two, Juan, you're number three, uh, Jung, you're number four. So they would choose their slide, they would find their slide and start working on it. Okay, so I'm gonna start a Screencastify. I'm just gonna make one right now. We're gonna start Screencastify. I'll do my browser tab. Now, here's the more options. This is one of the things, the troubleshooting. You wanna click on this and you want to make sure that you have this toggled on. Show drawing tools, just in case. I think the default is this, but sometimes I don't want my toolbar to show, so I will toggle this off, okay? So just in case, double check, make sure that it is on. And everything else sounds good, so then I'm going to record. All right, so even though I didn't hear the three, I didn't see the three, two, one, I know that I am recording because there's a red dot on my Screencastify right here. That means it is recording. And if you look down at the bottom left hand corner, there's my toolbar. So if I present, yeah, the toolbar does go away. If I am presenting, then I only have the uh, presentation toolbar. It overrides the screencast. So I'm going to stop my video. And this defaults to unmute. You can unmute, you know, you will mute that so you can hear it. And this is where the trimming is. And it's saving, it automatically saves to my drive. So I'm gonna copy this, copied. I'm gonna go back to my slides. Let me, I'm, and then let me find an empty one, here's one. And then, so we're going to insert video and then you're, you can do it by URL, you can do it by Google Drive. So if I go to Google Drive, It's the very first one. Usually it comes up in order. If you cannot find it, there's a there's a folder that will say Screencastify. I don't know if this is working, if it's uh, finished loading or not. Yeah, my computer's going a little slowly, but it, you can see that this is the video that I just made. So if you're, if you're asking, if you're looking at this going, I don't even know how to get a picture. Like where is everybody getting the pictures? So let me go to a, a new slide. When you're in your slides, if you hit insert, you click on insert an image, you can upload it from your computer or you can search the web. Okay, and you type in whatever, like I typed in dog, you know, you can type in money or whatever, whatever the subject is. And the good thing to know about this is that Google only puts in free uh, picture, free images. These are images that are open resource, so there's no copyright infringement. So everything, if you do a search in insert and uh, search the web, they'll only show you photos or images that um, are okay to use. So I'm just gonna pick 
whichever one, insert it. And then there's my image and I can resize it. Okay. So if you wanted to make a comment or if you wanted to insert, if your students, if this was your students project and they wrote some sentences, you can come right here to where it says open comments and you can add a comment here and you can insert your video as a comment. So if this was my students, I probably wouldn't want to put my screencast, my video on their slide, not necessarily. I would want it off to the side as a comment instead. So as we are working through this, um, Anthony, were there some other questions um, or comments or? Anything? Yeah, just a couple of questions for you, Elisa. So, um, Cynthia was asking, you know, as you get in the process of making more and more of these screencastifies mm -hmm. um, and they're saving to your Google Drive, do you have any suggestions about how to actually organize all of these so that um, you can keep track of the ones that you make and you know what they're connected to and all that? Yes, um, so that, that's a really, really good question because what happens, because it saves automatically, you don't even have to do it. It doesn't, doesn't say where do you wanna save it to or do you wanna organize it like some of the other Google products. But the very nice thing about it is that, let me go back to my live screen real quick. When you go into Screencastify, and you get this main menu. So you don't have to go to screencastify.com to look at all your, your videos. You can come here and then you have my recordings, okay? But also if you go into your drive, they have, they have created a, a folder for you from your very first screencast. The very first one you made, you didn't save, it saved for you in a drive in a folder called Screencastify. So that was really nice of them, I thought. Let me see if I can find it very easily here. And from there, you can divide your screencasts into uh, other folders if you would like, like subfolders. That way, if you have grammar ones, or maybe you have two different classes or something, but they're all uh, one there. So the other thing is that when you make a screencast, it becomes the very first thing in your drive. Now we'll get to see how messy my drive is. I won't be a very good example of this, but so if you go to recent, right, these are all the things you've worked on recently. So here's some of the screencasts that I just made. So it goes by your whatever the tool it is that you used. But if, you, um, if you're like, what happened in that screencast I made a long time ago or a while ago? I don't know what happened to it. You're going to go into your drive and somewhere in your drive, you can just type in a uh, screen, you can uh, screencastify. If you opened that folder, if the folder opened, then you would see all your screencasts and then you can organize it into subfolders if that is helpful for you. And of course it's not working for me. And then the other question, Anthony, was um, what? So there was a question about, um, so if we can go back to the slides for a second. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, my uh, presentation? Your, your, yes. Presentation. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the Google slides uh -huh. with, the, with the cat and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so people, if you go back up to your slide number one, mm -hmm. And I think this is the question, if I understand correctly. So people are trying to view your screencast, but they're not able to, or they said they were denied access. Um, if you go into, let me present. You don't have permission to play one media object in this presentation. And I think that's the message people are that's getting. The, oh. The dog is brown. Huh, I got the he message, but I'm still able to play. Were, were people mouth. not able? I, and I've never seen this message before, so I'm not sure where you to request access. I, I wonder if I can play it because it's mine. But yeah, I've never seen this um, this error message before. Um, so are there settings on the screen? Wait. Since, the, since these things are ending up in Google Drive, do I, people I'm sorry, I, I don't know who this was. But... Hey, oh. Mrs. Cisneros. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Cisneros, good job. I, I don't want to invade your privacy. Sorry, I just <laughs> wanted to check. But um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure where that error message came from and why some people aren't. And but I was able to play her video. What was what were you just going to ask me, Anthony? So I guess the question is about sharing, right? So um, mm -hmm. are these when you make these screencasts, are they automatically viewable, or do you, are there settings that you need to adjust on the screencasts? I've never had to adjust any settings. It just goes straight into my drive, and then I add it to wherever I need. Need it to go and I've never had people not able to to look at it which it, I'm very surprised so, uh, I've done it with my students and they you know they've all done it I wonder well no everybody's in, if you're in slides you have your Google open I would think that would probably be, you know maybe be the only way if like you were looking at it from you know a non Google account so people are okay so there's a Alisa, go to slide 22. Okay. Um, Terry's suggesting we try her slide and see what happens. 22, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm getting the message and then let me see. And she saved hers as a YouTube also. <laughs> Terry, you're so cute. And then let me see this one. <laughs> Oopsie. So I was able, she has hers actually as good as YouTube videos. Um, so she might have pulled them up from YouTube and, and inserted them, which is fine too. Um, but for as far as for like my, my uh, video, it's a, a web.m, which should open with everybody. So, Alisa, because the screencast files are being stored in the Google Drive, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that people don't have to take a look at the settings first? Correct. I, well, I have never had to do that. So I have never had to adjust any settings or set it to public. The only time I have to set it to public or, or change any kind of settings is if I'm uploading it, if I'm publishing it to YouTube. That's when you'll see the, that's when you'll see the, uh, the menu to change to public, um, unlisted or private. But as far as regular, just, you know, screencast, I did it. But I'm really surprised that people wouldn't be able to, to watch mine right now. Yeah. I mean, Melinda, our, um, OTAN Melinda is here. She says the video needs to be shared because it's oh. in Google Drive. And I think people are, there are a few random comments here and there about, Cynthia said, when I added the link, I had a choice. So I guess choice on the settings. Hmm. Maybe mine is already default, you know, maybe I've already said it and so it, you know, I just forget it. So maybe I, I had done it and I totally forgot that I'll have to, let me just make well, it. Linda also put a suggestion to or a reminder, you know, when you're, oh, go ahead. No, no, Are you, go ahead, Anthony, if you're waiting for oh, me. Okay. So um, there's also, Melinda reminded us in Google Drive, if you, um, if you adjust the share settings on the folder, like you were telling us about the Screencastify folder, mm -hmm. so then everything in the folder will be um, will be subject to the settings that you create for the folder. Hmm. So if the folder is public, then everything in the folder will be public. So maybe folks need to double check in the settings on their folder first to and then see how the videos show up after that. This is brand new too. I've never seen this. Um, let me. So I'm look. I, I created a video. You know, just a five second video, and I'm looking at the the shares. Oh, see here it is right here. Private only. You can view the video. Public or unlisted. Mine must. I must. I don't think I have to do it all the time. Oh, private. Yeah, I, I hardly, I mean, this is probably one of the first times I've ever like toggled between any of them. And so I don't know why some people can watch my videos and some people can't. My students don't have a problem. They all can watch my videos. 
But so, Elisa, we had a reminder to, you know, people are signing into all kinds of accounts here, club accounts, pub accounts. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's another um, Sure. Yeah, that could factor. be it too. Yeah, the, the club account could have some um, blockings or just some more extra setting security settings in it so that not everybody can see what's on the Google Drive. That could be that definitely could be it too. And I think once you do this, it's right here under the copy of the shareable. It's right here. I believe once you select one, it d defaults to it ongoing until you change it again. So if you do make a screencast, but you don't want it to be public, then you would physically change the settings to private or unlisted. That's a good one. Thank you. Great. Yeah, these, the, the sharing is always a little tricky, so we mm -hmm. have to make sure that we understand how that works. Yes, definitely. Um, a couple more questions, Elisa. Um, there was a question about the explore button. So when you're making back on making this oh. screencast, so mm -hmm. what does the explore button do? I pushed this. The <laughs> oh, that Melinda point. might have a better answer for me. I pushed it today and I went to go look at it and I, I don't know. <laughs> See, like, I think it's more like themes maybe. Um, well, you could actually type in, see where it says search your uh -huh. docs in the web. So I believe you could do, isn't that where you typed in to get the images that you showed us? You typed in money or whatever, and then you. Oh, the I didn't do it here, it. but yeah, this might be it. Oh, so. so and it, then you it, have it, some different options there. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives you a web browser. Yeah. Oh, so and it also goes into your drive. So anything that has the word money will show up in from my drive or those images that we did, or a web, you know, if you need something uh, more from the web. Oh, right. So you just showed us, yeah, at least I'm sorry, you just showed yeah. us how to do like a search. I right? did an insert. Yeah, I did insert in images because that okay. was my go-to. Yeah. But so there's this so many... is a nice little Google feature yeah. with the Explore because not mm -hmm. only with what's within your drive, but you can mm -hmm. also search just images For information yeah search. it's information you could google something or get images or find it in your drive so this is actually a really handy tool uh, okay so Guillermo was saying he's got a picture in a slide mm -hmm. and he created the video mm -hmm. so how do you add the video so that you can put it next to the slide or put it next to the picture oh well actually yeah put it well, next to the slide he said okay so let me go here so insert video and then look for it in your drive or recent or it, it should hopefully it'll come up at the very top if you just made it i hope that helps um, and elisa i'm sorry do, do you say that if your students make a slide and you want to give the feedback you can put that in a comment is that what you said mm -hmm. and can you and show us how to do that again Yes, it's right up at the top uh, next to the word present. Um, you'll see uh, the little message and it'll say uh, open comment history. And then you can add comments here. You can add a comment and it's the same like we did with docs. You can just type in your comment, cute dog. And then you can paste your, paste your, um, your video and then you hit comment. So this will be on their comments. It, it, it won't be part of their, it's off to the side. It's not part of their slide. So I don't want to put my comment on their slide because I could technically, you know, copy and paste on, directly on their slide, but I wouldn't want to do that. Okay. And then Elisa, um, mm -hmm. this is actually, this is good right here. So in your, do you see slide one and then slide two? Mm -hmm. So Jacqueline is asking, um, you know, her, she added a video to her slide, but it looks black. Yeah. Sometimes if you add a slide, I mean, if you add a video before it's completely processed in Screencastify, it will turn black. But I think I've done this a few times too, and I, I couldn't figure out why. But I think, let me see if it, sometimes it just takes a few minutes. And if it doesn't, if it, if like right now I see black, I don't, it hasn't changed. I might want to just delete it and try to upload it again and see if that helps because maybe it's already processed in Screencastify. And then when you upload it into your slide, it'll come up. You'll see on Screencastify too, you'll see like a thumbprint of your video.
Um, how do you record audio over a previously recorded screencast? Mm, okay. Did we talk about that last time? No, but we can do it over video. So mm, let me see if, um, let me see if, let me see if I could do it right now. Um, so this is a screencast. The dog is brown. He has money in his mouth. Okay, so this is a screencast. It's a web dot, I mean, a dot web end. And you won't, if you have the whole screen open, your, your best friend is going to be the alt shift R, alt shift R on a PC. And I think it's the option I don't know what the key is called in on Max. Sorry, the Option Shift R that starts and stops a recording. So let's see if this. Will... The dog is so brown. I am screen casting over the money screencast. In his mouth. So I recorded a screen cast over this screen cast. So even if you can't see the toolbar, I mean, you can't see the, if you can't see this right here, then know that you can always start a recording. You can always start a recording with Alt Shift R. And I have that on my slides. But, oh, here it is, Alt Shift R starts and stops a recording. So even if you're on full screen, like right now I'm on full screen on this presentation slide, if I hit Alt Shift R, you'll hear the blink, 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 and then you can start recording. Alt Shift R again, and it'll stop the video and then it'll, let, it'll get you to your menu. We're not gonna have enough time to talk about um, video, I mean audio only, but just know that when you create a, a screencast and you use your webcam only, your webcam, then when you finish, your option is to save it as, to save it as audio in MP3. Okay. So you can always add that into your slides also. So if you had a picture of something and you wanted your students just to listen to it, then they can, um, just like we did before, where you could focus in on, they could focus on listening and then asking questions, answering questions afterwards. And then this is how you, this is the step-by-step -step process. So here I have a picture and here is my audio. So I am going to, oops, sorry, I'm on presentation mode, but it, If I take that and I go right over, so I'm hiding, I'm kind of hiding the audio, I can group them together. I, I just make a thing over the whole thing and I click arrange and group. So now they're one entity, they're not separated anymore. And then when you go to play, here's the, when you hover over it, here's the play button, okay. So if you present, A, B, C, D, E, F. and so forth. So that's how you insert audio only. And I have the step-by-steps for you. Uh, you know, we're completely rushing through this now. And you're going to export as MP3. In Gmail, um, it's, it's basically the same principles. It's, you're going to insert, uh, when you're into, when you're in, you're going to make a new email and you're going to come down at the bottom where it says drive, insert files using drive. And you find your screencast, whatever it is that you're looking for, and then you insert. 
oops, I pushed the wrong thing. And then it comes into insert. Okay. So that's, that's primarily how I communicate with my students is I use Gmail. I, I send everything through Gmail. Um, we haven't quite advanced to the part where we can um, start using docs yet. They're still kind of getting used to the whole Zoom and Hangouts. So um, it's been a little bit of a slow process. But I think once we get back to the classroom and I'm able to work with them on Chromebooks in the class, I think that the process will be so much faster because our students, my students are going to be used to at least using the computer a little bit. So hopefully with yours too. So this is one of the things, I don't know if anybody, I had never heard of Edpuzzle before, and I don't know if anybody here uses it or has heard of it, but it's new. It, when you look at the, when you finish and it says sharing and it says to the classroom or publish to YouTube, it comes up as Edpuzzle now too. And what it is, is that you can make videos into quizzes. And so I, I, of course, created an account and I just wanted to check it out. I, I probably won't use it myself, but I thought it was a pretty good idea. And this was uh, something that I had uh, looked at um, for this, but we, we are running out of time. But I did want to let you know that that's what was there. But if anybody uses Edpuzzle, uh, I mean, it's now it's easier for you to take your screencast and, and send it right to your Edpuzzle account. Lisa, um, for yes. those folks who are not too familiar with that puzzle, um, mm -hmm. it's a great tool that you can use with your videos because what you can do is you can basically segment your videos. So you could show a part of a video, stop the video, and then ask some um, assessment questions. You know, you could even just simple true false or multiple choice or something like that. So um, yeah, that's a really handy feature now for the, you know, putting those two tools together. Yeah, I mean, if we have, let's see here. Oh, I'm already over one minute, but I mean, uh, I'll just, if anybody wants to stay and, and take a look at that, I can, I can put that, I can pop that up there. Um, it was uh, one that I had found on ESL, about ESL, and I thought it was really cute. But um, let me just go ahead and wrap up the, the session first. Alisa, I did remind people, or I've been reminding people in the chat that um, we do have all of the presentation materials from Alisa's part one and two on Screencastify. Those, those are on the OTN mm -hmm. website, and we can show people quickly how to get there. But, um, mm -hmm. and that was from April 23rd, I'm sorry, April 22nd and April 23rd. So if you want to go back and review the uh, presentations and also download Alisa's materials, they are available. So Alisa is showing us on the OTAN website, OTAN.us. You go to the COVID-19 field support uh, page via that button. Scroll down a little bit to the previous OTAN webinars link in the blue table or bluish table. And then the table is in reverse chronological order. So scroll down to April 22nd and 23rd. And we have both of the uh, video presentations there, video recordings, and also Alisa's slides as well. So please feel free to go ahead and review those recordings, um, download her slides. And as soon as we can get Alisa's slides and presentation up for today, um, probably slides first before the recording, but we'll get that onto the table um, as quickly as we can you know, the next day or so. So that's where they're gonna be housed. Yes, and I just noticed that this is PowerPoint. So if anybody's having trouble opening the PowerPoint, um, I can resend that and put it as a Google Slides also. Yeah, we do that mainly for accessibility purposes, but if there mm -hmm. are any, yep, yeah, or folks can just email us support at OTAN mm -hmm. US and we can send it we'll, uh, we'll help you work it out. Mm -hmm. um, Elisa, just there was one more question and Pato sure. asked. Um, so she was saying, and I think you talked about this, we talked about this in part one, some more, you know, before, but um, you know, most of our students, they tend to be just on their phones, right? So they don't yes. have computers, they don't have yes. a lot of things available at home. Yes. So I think you reminded us that you can only, you can't create screencasts on your, or using Screencastify, you can't use it to create screencasts on your phone. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, on any mobile device, it's, you can't create, they can watch, they can watch your videos but they can't, they wouldn't be able to create them or you wouldn't yeah. be able to create them. Have you found any tools, other kinds of tools that, that students can use on their phones besides Screencastify? 
I'm not familiar with the other ones like Screencast-O-Matic or Loom, um, mm -hmm. but I mean, you definitely, you guys can, def OTAN people can definitely answer better than I could about that. Yeah, people, or Melinda was just saying, you know, can't folks just create videos on their phone? On their, that's what I was, that's how I originally started doing. Before I started using Screencastify, I was literally just like, as if I was taking a selfie photo, I would just take a selfie video instead. And that's how I started it with, at the very beginning when we first went remote. So I was just using my phone and students are more than welcome to do that. And then they can email it to you or text it to you. And then you can, uh, you can upload it for them onto a Google's, or I guess they could upload it to a Google slide on their phone. Yeah, and then you can give that video feedback, right? And then the video mm -hmm. feedback you can send back to the students, and they'll be able to see their see your video feedback, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so for them to create their own video, just have them use their phone. Yeah. Okay. But that would be a whole another lesson too. They'll have to, have to teach. But a lot of them know how to do it already. They're so they're probably professional at it. They already know the lighting and everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Empato, um, I know Empato is still in the room, and mm -hmm. I do want to point out um, back on that OTAN COVID nineteen field support page. Mm -hmm. um, we were very fortunate to get a um, a link to um, a uh, a guide created by West Contra Costa Adult mm -hmm. Ed. And they focus, so at least if you go back to the previous page. So um, right there, right above the table where it says from West Contra Costa Adult Education. So they actually created a whole guide on learning only on phones. Wow. So you, you may want to take a look and see what they have suggested. Um, it's a Google Doc. I don't know how much they, I know that they created this kind of early on in the in the stay at home process. I don't know how often they're updating the um, this guide, but you may wanna take a look at this one as well. Um, <laughs> you may wanna take a look, I'm looking at uh, Cedar's comment in the chat. Um, <laughs> you may wanna take a look at this, gu to th at this guide as well. Um, I think that they have some ideas, not only about video, but just in terms of you know staying in touch with your students and how you might mm -hmm. be able to send them assignments and um, other kinds of materials and such. So. Um, this might be another resource, Emparo and, and folks, you might want to just take a look and see what our friends at West Contra Costa adults suggest, um, what they recommend. I, like I say, I'm not sure um, if they talk at all about video tools at all. I know that they were very focused on just trying to get their assignments and such out to students, but okay. Right. Well, so here's how like making recordings. Oh. Okay, so they have some ideas, video mm -hmm. recording, okay. And then turning a PowerPoint into a video. So in case somebody doesn't have PowerPoint or such or on their phone, then right, you know they right, can watch right, the video. Right, right. Oh, there's Screencastify and Screencast-O-Matic. Yeah, but we do know about Screencastify, as Elisa just said, that unfortunately the creation is not possible on the phone. Right. The viewing is possible on the phone, so. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I do think actually, Elisa, if you can go back to the go back to the COVID nineteen page for a second. Mm -hmm. So and click on our resource guide, the one right at the the very first one. So um, and then if you there should be a like an index that opens on the left side that can help you. Well, anyway, I believe that we have a video section. Yeah, go ahead and open that up using video right there in the middle. Um, yeah, there are other tools that are out there. Yep, so, some. and if you scroll actually up um, a couple boxes, Elisa, right up, uh, even above that. So like Powtoon, for example, Animoto, oh. Animaker. So you might, oh, Adobe Spark might be a good choice as well. Um, and Adobe Spark is pretty easy to, and it's built for mobile. So you may want to take a look at some of these other tools as well, not just, you know, on your phone, you know, the camera, the video on your phone, but there right. might be some of these other um, possibilities as well. So is Adobe I, Spark free? It is. Yeah, you can, um, teachers and students can create a, a free Adobe Spark account. Um, so you may want to take a, take a look at that tool. Mm -hmm. All the ones that are highlight, if you see a yellow highlight, that means it's, it's new, it's a new post. So it's, it's been yeah. added. So yeah. that'll I've, differentiate between um, what's already been up there and what's new. Yeah, we've, we, we're That's still learning. Really I mean, there's, yeah, there's so many tools that are out there. I mean, we're it's, still learning about tools and yeah, it's sharing so this smart. the field. So, yeah. Okay. So Elisa, thanks much. Do you, anything else you want to sign off with before we exit? I don't have any more questions. Um, please 
contact um, OTAN and direct your questions to me or whomever at OTAN at support uh, at OTAN.us or come to the office hours and um, yeah, let me know, share your success stories. I'd be really happy to hear them. Thank you so much, guys.